Hey everyone, in the previous video I taught you how to sort a list of lists or a 2D list. And we started off just by first seeing how sorting works without nested lists. So let's go through a simple example of that because I'm going to be teaching you how to customize the sort using a custom sorting technique. So sounds a little complicated but it shouldn't be too bad. But first, before we jump into nested lists, let's just take a more simple example. We'll just call the list D and we'll just put some numbers in here. And you guys probably know by now that by default it sorts it from least to greatest. So if we sort D, we run this, and one comes first and 50 comes at the very end. Well, there is actually another parameter defined in this sorted function that can take a function to process this data to decide how it's sorted. So to do that, you can say key and set it equal to some function name. Don't put the parentheses, you just put the function name. So an example, would be ABS for absolute value. So far we haven't talked about absolute value in Python, but it works just like in math. If there's a negative number, it considers it to be a positive number. Basically how far is the number away from zero? So if we went in here and threw some negative numbers in here, throw a negative eight, doesn't really matter where, I'm just throwing them random places. We'll do a negative two. Maybe just some more twos in here, just to see how that works out. And what we can do now is we can print this. And what it's going to do is it's going to put all of the numbers from least to greatest, ignoring the negative sign. So 2 and negative 2 are at the same position. If we were to get rid of the key here, then it's going to put all of the negatives first. So in that situation, it's going to go from negative 8 all the way up to 50. So that is how customizing the sort works with a list that doesn't have any other lists in it. But when we have a 2D list, we can be a little bit more creative because we can process that list as a whole. So maybe we want to sum up all of the data in the list and sort it by that. So here's how you do something like that. Let's get rid of our simple list here and now we can start working with this 2D list called data. And let's just say this data contains some points for games and we're trying to see who won by summing up all of the points. Maybe let's bring the numbers down to a reasonable amount so it's not too crazy. And we'll just change the data just a bit. So let's say there's three rounds and we're gonna see who got the most points here. So go in here, add a little bit more data. So let's just see how it sorts by default. When we do this, like we taught in the previous video, it's going to look at the first piece of data. We got four versus 10 versus 10 versus 10. All the tens come to the right because four is less than 10. Then what we do, if there's any that are the same, such as these tens, we look at the second piece of data, which in this case we have two, four, and 10. So the two is gonna come first, then the four, and then the 10. And at that point, it's completely sorted. We don't have to look at the next number because we were able to figure it out just by going to that second number there. But now let's do it with sums. So the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna pass in a second argument here, and that's gonna be to the key parameter. And we're just going to say sum. So for each element in this data list, it's going to sum it. So it's gonna sum this, it's gonna sum this, and so forth. So run this, and check it out now. It's going to go from least to greatest of the total number. So here we have 15, we have another 15 here, then we have 16, and then we have 30. So when you're using the key, when we have list of lists, it processes it on that entire list. Since we're working with lists, if instead we try to do something that works with single numbers, it's not really gonna make sense. For example, if we did the absolute value while running this, look at this, it doesn't work because absolute value doesn't work for lists. So just keep in mind what data you're working with and ideally each element inside of the list is of the same type. In this situation, everything is a list. So we'll go back to sum but I don't just wanna do the sum. I wanna actually create a custom function to work with these numbers in whatever way we like. So what we can do is we can create a function to process these lists, and that's what I'm gonna show you now. So we're going to actually work with the average of the numbers. So pretty much it'll take these three numbers, add them up, divide it by however many elements in the list there are, in this case, three. So to do that, we say def, we can just call it average, and this is going to take a list as a, an argument, so we'll create a parameter there. Then all we have to do is say return. We're going to take the sum of the data and divide it 
by however many elements there are, which you can get using len and pass in data. And then for the key down here, what we can do is use average. Let's run it, see what happens. We're gonna have the same sort as last time because everything is three elements long, but let's just change up the data some. So in this situation, I just added a bunch of tens, which will increase the sum, but it's also going to increase the length here. So it's going to bring it down more than just having a single number like 30 here. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more data. We'll add a 100 there. And in this situation, we're just going to have a 10. So let's see the output, let's run it. And that's the output, but it's not immediately apparent why it's in that order, because we can't just see the average right away. So if you wanna just see the numbers for your own sake, then you could print it inside of this average function, but you probably don't wanna leave that in there forever. But just for a second, let's do that. We'll assign this to a variable A, and then what we'll do is we'll print A and return A. That's just a different way of structuring it. Running it, and let's take a look. This first list here, calculated at 11.25, which is the third highest number, which is why it showed up right here. Next up, this really long list here, that actually was the lowest at 8.4444445. <laughs> That's why it came here at the very first. Next up, we have 28.75 for this list here. So that one's obviously the highest. It shows up last. And then lastly, we have 10, which obviously that's the average for this one. So that's gonna come right here. So hopefully that's a little bit clearer, but I don't think we should leave the prints there. So let's just go back to what we had where we were returning it directly. All right, so that is how you create a custom function to sort lists of lists. That's all I got. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some review, just make sure we got everything solid before we go on to the next section. Stay tuned and if this was helpful, I'd appreciate that you subscribe. See you then.